I'm at a scrap clean out job right now and this person um, said he got my name from a friend of mine so he called me up because they're cleaning out this garage here and this barn over here they're just moving in so they're cleaning out junk that's been left over so I got a lot to clean up here uh, that stuff's gonna be burned this stuff this pile can take whatever scrap there's some starter motors there old fridge this is a pretty cool winch Forge 500k fix it top I don't know and uh, another winch thing down there pile of wire some barbed wire Barbed wire, over, barbed wire over there and then this pile of scrap here so right now I'm just picking out some of the non-ferrous type stuff brass rad yeah tailgate from old Chevy this pile of wood I said I can pick through that some windows so yeah inside there's more stuff inside too so that's gonna be it's gonna be quite the job to pick a, to clean up all this um, but I think we're going to find some treasure, so I'll keep you guys posted on this. So I just came home for a quick minute because I need to change my shoes. This thing, my shoes just died when I was loading up this. So put on a new pair of shoes, I'm going to go drop this off the scrapyard. And it's just straight steel. So I had brought in the first load of scrap to the scrapyard. I got 43 bucks for all that. Uh, scrap steel is not too good these days, but it's something. And this is the second load that I just brought home. You can see it's really packed. Lots of interesting goodies in there. Lots of wire, different machinery that I have no idea what it does. Like this thing here. I don't know what that is. It's some sort of uh, uh, arc stand. Your new tractor garage. Yeah. So I've emptied my truck into this area here. I'll show you that in a minute. I went back to the shop this morning, got a little bit from my heating and cooling shop. Not very much though, but I'll explain that last clip that you just saw. This is my camper that I picked up uh, for 500 bucks. You may have seen it in my last video. And I've gutted the whole thing and I put a roof on it. Maybe I'll show you that roof real quick here. So I just put this tin roof on because the this membrane was leaking pretty much everywhere. So I hastily put this on. It's not my best work, but it's going to last for a while, quite a while. Um, it's on a bit of a slant going down. There's on the other side. There's no two by four here, so it's just on a little bit of a of a slope. I have been meaning to build a shed for a while for a lot of my small engine type stuff. You know, snow blower wood chipper, stuff like that in the lawn tractor. But I've really been dreading the thought of building a shed. So this is this is what the idea that I came up with. I cut out the back door and I have these ramps here that, you know, if I need them for, for my truck or whatever, I can easily just take it off. And there we go. So we can just drive the lawn tractor in here. And in the back here, I'll have like the snow blower, lawnmower, wood chipper. Uh, I even, you know, put my jack in here because I don't really have a place for that. Um, any other big stuff that I want to store in here that's kind of cumbersome. Um, yeah, so this is the idea that I came up with. It's, it's 25 feet long by 8 feet wide, so that's a pretty good size shed. So anyways, I'll show you the scrap that I picked up. I found a few relics that I, I think are pretty neat. This here is just scrap steel, straight scrap steel, nothing really interesting in here. 
um, some old tractor parts, some old uh, water pump parts. Um, but over here is more of the interesting stuff. This chair, I thought this chair was really cool. The upholstery is in okay shape for, for its age. I don't know, I probably won't end up saving it, but I just thought it was really neat. So it's made by the General Fireproofing Company, Youngstown, Ohio. Good form. I just think it's pretty cool. It's like a, it's such a well-made chair. And uh, all aluminum base here, the casters are broken off. This thing may be too far gone to to salvage it. I looked up pictures on the internet and there is like supposed to be some embroidering here. We're not embroidering, uh, but uh, it's supposed to say peerless. You can't even see it. It's just, it's very far gone. Um, but it's a heavy duty sucker. Look at that. Some farming equipment parts. I found these. These are uh, for barn doors. And this thing's pretty interesting. I was didn't know what it was at first, but my guess is it's an old time part washer. So you have this pump down there. It's like a, just a hand pump. And then you can wash your parts in there. So yeah, you take this part and you can see the oil can drip through and goes into this basin. Found a Tonka truck. It's in really good shape, considering, you know, all, the, all of its pieces are still there and the glass is still intact and everything. So it's in pretty good shape. Old tin. I don't know what these do. I think they're just a grease gun. Could be wrong. Um, this here, I wasn't too sure about this and I was just about to throw it in with the rest of my scrap, but then I said, oh, hold on a second. What is this? And I took it apart and then you can read this here. It says, crankcase ventilation VW 289. This is from a Volkswagen Bug. So this is a car part from a Volkswagen Bug engine. So I can imagine that's going to be pretty valuable. Bell. And this is like a really old, neat old regulator. And see it's got whole, the regulators down in there. Found a Mustang hubcap. Ford Mustang. It's original. Pretty good shape too, considering. A bar clamp, and eh, it's just a bunch of other neat stuff, and I'm not gonna go through every single thing, you kind of look it over. That's another hubcap, and I can't remember what that emblem is from. I remember seeing it before. Um, this is just some sort of pump. And this is all the spools of wire that he gave me. And it's pretty much all solid core stuff. There's no stranded stuff in here. Oh, actually right there is one. That's stranded. Um, but for the majority of it, I see that's all solid core. This is really expensive stuff. A lot of value here. That there, I don't know what that is. It's a uh, fusion burner. For a fusion burner fluorometric. It's just uh, metal, t metal, uh, metal wire. So we just got a whole bunch of electric motors, some plumbing motors. This is a brass radiator. So that's going to be about, you know, that's probably 15 or 20 bucks in scrap right there. And some starters and this is full of lead wheel weights. And that's just all uh, aluminum pieces in there. Great big old um, water pump. This part here is a, is a motor, so I could try to take that off. Otherwise, the whole thing just goes in as scrap steel. And over here is just a bunch of aluminum and stainless steel. Whole bunch of it. So that's what I picked up yesterday. Oh yeah, and then I have a stainless steel grid. So I'm gonna keep that, have that kicking around for future projects. So this is gonna be the third load of scrap from this job. Lots of old appliances in this lot. Um, this old refrigerator, I wish I could have showed you the inside of this thing, it's so cool. But it's all behind all this scrap here, I don't want to move it around. Old Admiral. These are the bins from it. I uh, didn't really get anything else very interesting from yesterday, except for this sandblaster and sandblaster reservoir.
some of these barrels that say gasoline on the side, and then this winch thing here. Very big, heavy thing. So, that is it. I'm gonna go back to the scrapyard, drop this off, and maybe go for another load today. Here's a look at that old refrigerator right before I throw it out. Admiral, it's pretty neat. There's the freezer chest and freezer drawer. I just love the color. I think that's so neat. There's a little butter dish holder built right into the actual door. Okay, it is Sunday evening. I got a few things to start packaging up for tomorrow, some eBay sales. I'll go over them in a second. Um, I just made it home uh, this afternoon. The boys and I, we were up at the cabin for the weekend. Um, had a really good time canoeing and fishing. It was a great time. And while I was there, I was making money on my eBay store. I'll show you what's sold here. Let's just start over here, something that's pretty basic. This is like my bread and butter stuff. This is a, a relay switch, an overload capacitor for a refrigerator. Um, it's a GE refrigerator overload relay capacitor. And there's the product numbers there. Sold it for $30 and $16.74 for shipping to the United States. Total $46 Canadian. That's going to Louisiana. A dram, park and brake, foot lever, the whole assembly all in one piece so that's from a 1998 dodge ram that i had um, i bought that ram as a parts truck uh, to take parts off of for my last pickup truck that i had which was a great workhorse so i took that off um, and i listed it and it must have been it must have been on ebay for a couple of years at least um, i had it up for sale for uh, i think 100 and i forget 100 and let's say 150 dollars and I had the best offer option on it. So someone sent me a uh, best offer of $78 and I took it. So it's going to North Carolina, $78 and $37.48 for shipping to North Carolina. Keys, my goodness, keys. So these are all keys. They're cut, they're used, and they are from my, my post office. So they know me pretty well and they know that I scrap metal, so they usually save stuff like this for me there. Um, so they gave me a whole bunch of keys, and they had all the had some old locks in it too, and it had these were they all had uh, little key loops in them and everything. So I cleaned them all off. I, I took all the loops out and everything, and then I weighed them for two pounds. So I made all these um, these bags, two, two pounds of keys, and I've been selling them. They've been going very well. I have no idea why people are buying keys. Um, it's obviously for something like craft. Uh, the only thing that we can really think of is wind chimes. We hear that's pretty popular to use keys for. But I don't know. If you guys know of why people want to buy used keys, please let me know in the comments. I'd, be, I'd appreciate that. So anyways, two pounds of used cut keys. $30. So $29.95. $20 for shipping. That is going to North Carolina. So $50 total. And yeah, I mean, these things have been going really well. Um, uh, so what happened is I, I had listed for $19.95. And then that within 24 hours, I sold two packets of these keys. Um, so I bumped the price up to 25 and it was still selling. So now I've bumped it up again and up to $30 now, and they're still selling. So luckily what happened as well is that I went to another post office in my area, and they know me that I scrap and I, I do metal, uh, recycle metal, so they gave me more of their keys. And it's, uh, uh, so I just updated the listing. I think I added six more packs of these things. So it's a nice little listing. Um, it's uh, unexpected, that's for sure. This guy here, I don't know what this is, and I remember I, this came with a whole bunch of stuff from my auction that I went to for the uh, Canadian Science and Technology Museum auction. I looked it up briefly. There's hardly any information about it. Um, I'll read the title first that I made. I think it's been over a year ago that I made this listing. So Northern Electric Telephone Interrupter. 
contacts terminal board and there's just the the number that's on it i sold for fifty dollars forty eight dollars express both shipping to texas now i think this is something to do with uh, a party line so if you're going to set up a party line um, you need something like this for it's from northern electric it is just a little switch from a uh, Maytag washer. Maytag washer temperature control selector switch for $25. $13.61 for shipping. $3.24 sales tax. Now this here is a really nice sale from this weekend. This is a chlorometer. It's by Hatch. A test kit. Um, these sell very, very well uh, new. So this company is still making them. Um, they are used for testing water. I bought this one at an auction a while back along with another one that looked like this. It was a, a turb turbidity meter kit and I sold that one already for $500 um, and this one I sold as well just this weekend. So it is a chlorometer portable water testing kit sold for $500 track pack and that is going to Louisiana. Very nice. When I brought it home the battery pack had exploded. It had some old AA batteries in there and the batteries had exploded. So the whole pack had to be replaced. I, I ordered a new pack. It's kind of a generic thing that you can find pretty easily online um, for a couple of bucks. So I ordered it and then I had to find another clip because the clip was the attachment uh, plug. It was corroded as well. It took me a long time to get this thing back up and running, but I did, and I'm glad I did. So there we go, 500 bucks. My last sale of the day is this here, a whole bunch of breakers. Um, these breakers, they're nothing special. They are 15 amp Federal Pioneer NC. So it's NC one pole, 15 amps. So NC 115. Um, yeah, these aren't, I'm selling them for uh, $9.95 each. Someone came into my store and just bought 36 of them all together. So there we go. Let's see here. So $9.95 each, a uh, quantity of 36, and total of $358.20. $19.29 for shipping, $53.64 sales tax, total $431.13. That is pretty cool because I was not expecting that. But I did have a large quantity, and if someone wants a large quantity of these items, then that's great because uh, I wasn't expecting to sell these for very much because you can find them at a store um, for not very much money. But uh, luckily, yeah, so in one of them all. All right, so I've lost track. Um, I think this is the fourth load that I've brought home. And it's really heavy. You can see the truck is is hurting right now. I'm going to take it all out, sort through it, and I think there's a few treasures in here. I sorted through my truck, and I'll show you what I found. Um, hopefully you guys don't mind. It's pretty busy traffic right now. It's rush hour. My street's very busy. So hopefully you don't mind that noise in the background. Uh, so all that there, straight scrap metal, just going in, going to the scrap yard as is. Some interesting stuff, my goodness. Um, we got some tractor starters here, a bunch of them. There's another pump thing here, some more tractor starter parts, I think. This thing here, my goodness. I don't know what this is. It's like a uh, it's like a power voltage meter output percentage of maximum output voltage made by Stat Staco Energy Products, Dayton, Ohio. And this is pretty stiff. I can barely move that. Indeed, there's just a big copper winding inside there. Interesting. So this here is an auto transformer for a 120 volt in and then zero to 140 out. Um, what I did with this, I just took the this, this housing off, this cage. Uh, I took the knob off and then I took the cage off and I sanded it down and I cleaned it. It was all bent. So I, I banged it back into shape. 
and then I primed it and painted it. Not the same color as the rest of it. I didn't want to have to paint everything else. Pretty heavy duty. I actually put a new uh, cord on it as well. Old uh, dryer cable or stove cable. It has an adapter plug for 120 volt. But yeah, the only other thing that I did with this is I just cleaned off all the insides and there's actually a, uh, a, a carbon brush that I, I cleaned up the, uh, the contacts and everything. Okay, so I have it plugged in. Let's turn it on. It's not lit right now, but I'm going to turn the knob. I think this would mount onto something, I'm not sure what, and then this shaft would be used um, for some purpose, I'm not sure what. But it's pretty neat, and these things sell pretty well on eBay. So that's what I intend on doing with this when to uh, resell. This guy here is a, I'm guessing that is a blacksmith forge. It ha they put a, a motor on it and the wheel inside has a crack in it. I'm assuming that is not the original wheel. So it says even heat made in Canada number two. I think that's really neat. So this is the blower that I pulled out of the barn and I've cleaned this one up. Uh, sanded it, stripped all the paint off of it, got all the rust off of it. So I don't know what company made this one. It's called Even Heat, made in Canada. And it's two parts. And this part has a, a broken piece on the top here. I still have to find a motor for this. It's just an electric motor that would mount on right here. Um, this is the wheel that it came with. It has a crack in it, so I'm still trying to find another wheel and a, a motor. I want to find a nice old one that I can mount on here, and then I'll have a functioning blower. And I mounted it onto this piece of wood here, and I found this. Um, I think it was like an old uh, countertop. Someone was getting rid of a bunch of pieces, so I stained it and just mounted it on there. And uh, I may put like a piece of threaded rod on right down here because I feel like there's a lot of weight resting in here. I'm not, I'm not too sure how this would have been mounted in practical use, but uh, this is how I decided to do it. But yeah, that's definitely something that uh, uh, blacksmithing is, is pretty popular these days. Another big hoist, one and a half ton hoist. This one is made in St. Catharines, Ontario. This thing here, it's made by this company here, Japanese name, uh, Kamakura. See it has all these numbers here to measure degrees. And I'm assuming it's either uh, some sort of vise for either a, a metal lathe or a drill press. But I could not find any information about this name. Basically, that is just the name of a city south of Tokyo. And I just couldn't see any other information about it. But very heavy and interesting. So yeah, you just there's bolts there and you, you, you loosen up those bolts and then you can swivel this back and forth. Over here, <clears throat> this is from a boat, I believe. It's in pretty rough shape. And this here is another heavy tractor piece. Solid cast iron. I uh, tried to figure out where it came from. All it is, all that says on it is MT3, and it's MT3 is a tractor. Um, I don't even know how this would mount onto the tractor. I think it's like some sort of hitch mount, so you can take these out and move, move it side to side. I don't really know anything else about it. it doesn't look like it's been used at all. If you guys uh, have any ideas, please let me know in the comments. I love to hear about all of your thoughts about all this stuff. If you, if you know what it is, please let me know. This is an old valve from Brockville, Ontario. Uh, Smarts, that's a, a local name. You see, I see a lot of their old castings in this area. So yeah, it's just a old water valve, I'm, I'm assuming, with a nice uh, wooden handle. So this is what the pump looks like today. Um, 
I stripped all the paint off of it, stripped all the rust off of it, cleaned it up as best I could. And then I primed it and painted it. And then I put some uh, white uh, paint on the embroidery around here. And I just cleaned up the handle, painted all up. Looks really nice. Uh, so this is from the Smarts Company, or Smart uh, Company, um, made in Brockville, Canada, Ontario, Canada. And this is the Red Wing model. So it's just a hand pump. So you just crank this handle back and forth, back and forth, and it will pump up water. I don't know what year this was made in. Uh, if I do find out, I'll put it in the video. Huh, it's kind of neat. Found the sand blaster gun to go with my sand blaster. That's an old lampshade. I wonder if I could sell that on eBay, just as is. Probably could. You know, people love old stuff like that. I picked up this old advertisement, and it's in pretty rough shape. Uh, if this was all metal, it would be worth a lot of money, but it's all wood, or this this old wood, uh, it's like some sort of chipboard or something. You know, even this sign here, it's a little bit banged up. Um, but if it was metal, definitely be worth some money. Um, even like this, you know, I could, it doesn't even stand up. I could bring it to the, to the flea market and somebody would buy it. I, I would feel like I would be snookering them into buying something like this because I don't, I don't see any value in this, but you know, that's just me. I'm sure someone would see this and think it's just the best thing ever. Um, other stuff that I found was just some copper pipe today. Um, this piece here, I don't know what that's from. I thought it was pretty neat though. The old square bolts in here. Bunch of stainless steel bolts down there and some plumbing parts. A little neat barrel. More stainless steel that I found today. A couple more pumps, uh, motors. This is pretty old. A little pump, I think, that runs off of a belt pulley. I may take this piece off and uh, clean it up and just try to sell that just by itself. Another old pump. I don't know what these things do. This is a bunch of VX cabling. Uh, three wire So I'll definitely try solid core and everything so I will Unravel that measure it see how much feet there is there and I'll sell that Some more old hubcaps Dodge division Pretty neat. I found another spool of wire today. I got a lot of wire in this uh, in this toolbox, there wasn't too much in here, except for this really nice old fishing reel. Oh, what's this, a fishing reel? Just a spoon. Not much else in here. Actually, here's a key. Too bad there wasn't a lock. I thought there was something else. Oh, it's just this piece of lead. So yeah, this, I think this reel is really, this reel is really nice. <laughs> I also want to show you guys this thing. I picked this up last night. It's a custom made push bar that will fit my truck. They have these fog lights on there and this uh, hook and it's made for to have a, a winch on the front. So I may actually get a a winch and put it in there because it'd be awful handy to have a winch on the truck just for around my house here you know for for trees and and pulling uh, cars around and other equipment around solid steel was that like two inches wide but one inch thick has a solid piece of steel so a little bit of hardware to go with it not much I'll have to get my own hardware but this is the box for those lights and look at the price, look at the sticker on that. $215. We just finished installing the push bar. That looks pretty nice.
I call this part the shinner because I've already hit my shin on it one time and it didn't feel very good. So I put one bolt through there and then another one through the bottom. I had to drill right through this solid steel and it's heavy man. The whole thing is probably 150 pounds. I love the look of it. I'll probably keep these lights on because the brackets are welded on. And then maybe I'll get a winch someday.